What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here. Just got back from the Toronto Regional Championships. Man, it is late, but I had an amazing time. I met so many people, got to do so many fun things, had some amazing food. There is way too much to talk about here for this gameplay video. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today with my good boy, Malamar, but before I get to that, I want to talk about a few things. First of all, check out this sweet play mat I got with Naganadel on it. Awesome stuff. Going to be giving this thing away for the Patreon giveaway for the month of May. I think it's May, right? Yes, for the month of May. Going to be giving that away. Also, super big shout out to all the awesome War Turtle Patreon tier members. I've got like a few of those already. You guys are amazing. And shout out to everybody who donated cards, money. You guys are awesome. Just people who helped me out with this Toronto trip made it a huge blessing an amazing time. Had a great time. So shout out to all you guys. Also got to bring home some awesome candy from Toronto. I don't know. I think they have these in Europe too, but I don't know. Like Maynard's, like these things, the wine gum candies, dude, do not have these in the United States. Had to pick up whole bunch of different kinds of these things oh my gosh they're amazing so good i just like was a huge fan of all these different candies that i got uh in canada so shout out to those and also they cost uh smarties rockets apparently in canada did you know this i did not know this because i think that there are some other candies called smarties in uh in canada but they're like little chocolates but these uh we call these smarties in the united states and apparently canada they call them rockets so i thought that that was super cool too but i've also got one more Amazing thing to show off. I've got a brand new playmat for anybody who likes the Misty playmat. Got a brand new Sabrina playmat. Check this out in the Etsy store. I am so unbelievably stoked on this artwork. It's awesome. We got Sabrina, you know, with her Espeon and her Venomoth tattoo over there, and Kadabra just eating breakfast. And Kadabra is using the psychic powers of playing with all the different food and taking Sabrina's spoon, bending it in the air. And it's just like, it, this playmat is so fun to me. And I just absolutely love this artwork. I mean, shout out to the artist Christian, uh, who I commissioned to do this. I just think it turned out absolutely stunning, absolutely amazing. And I am just beyond impressed with his amazing artistic talent. So this is available in the Etsy store on the playmat. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. It's in the description below. But enough with all that. We are going to get to some gameplay action. We are going to be playing our good old boy Malamar again because it is late. I understand. We, I want to get to some new decks as well. Uh, I had a bunch of people donate code. Shout out to you guys are amazing to help me get some new stuff on PTCGO here. Uh, so I'm going to be uploading those codes this week. It has just been a totally crazy busy weekend here. Still Sunday. As you can see, I'm wearing my Sunday shirt. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So it's still Sunday here. Just got back from the regional championships. Have not had time to even breathe yet but i want to get a video out for tomorrow so that we could just you know keep on rocking i know people like to watch these videos you know, during their lunch breaks at work and things like that it's part of what drives me to make sure that we have videos like every single day just because i know it's like it's just cool to have it's cool to be able to depend on so it means a lot to me to be able to get content out every day and it means a lot to me just everybody that just came up and told me uh you know what this channel means to them over the course of the weekend and things like that it just was a huge inspiration and just always keeps me going and warms my heart so just want to let you know let you guys know that i really appreciate it looking at what i got here in front of me i have no idea we've got a wishy-washy here and a lapras and i just do not know uh we got a uh, hey hello and a smiley face from my opponent there uh nano man 461 so shout out to nano man 461 for playing what appears to be a pretty cool deck. Now let's check out this wishy-washy. Once during your turn before you attack, you may discard all cards attached to Pokemon and return it to your hand, and you can't do it during the first turn or the turn you put it into play. Interesting. So it looks like they're probably going to be bouncing these wishy-washies around. Stuff like that. Now we have got, uh, what, a Professor's Letter here. Okay, I think I probably want to save that and just go in with a Cynthia, to be honest. I don't really want to play the letter since I didn't have any cards to discard things. I would have much rather played the letter in a situation like this. So let's just play that letter, go grab a couple of Psychic Energies, and what's awesome now is that I can just, you know, Mysterious Treasure with both of these. I mean, I could Brooklyn Hill take another closer look at my deck. I didn't really do a thorough deck search. I'm assuming I got... Yeah, a copy or two of an Ultra Necrozman here. Very good. I got a Dawn Wings. Very, very good. 
And other than that, I mean, you probably want to just not have something super scary happen to my uh, active Pokemon. You know, Lapras could probably come up in Blizzard Burn. Probably just want to Mysterious Treasure for a couple copies of Inkay and go from there. And I could get, you know, a couple copies. I could get a copy of like, I could get like Dawn Wings, I guess. And I could like stand into the active position, I suppose. But I think uh, it's a little bit, you know, disheartening to have to get rid of this beast energy. I, and it looks like I'm going to have to sick them more next turn. I know I want at least one Inkay. Now, I could, like, Mysterious Treasure away the Psychic Energy for a Ultra Necrozma, but that doesn't seem good because I'm going to assume the Inke is going down next turn. So I think I want to just get another Inke just in case, in which case this Beast Energy is probably just getting sacked, even though that's not what we want. I could stand in with my only Dawn Wings or Invasion, I guess, with my only Dawn Wings. I could go get my prism guy and do that, but I don't really want to do that either. So it looks like we're just going to have to say Sayonara to that beast energy, unfortunately. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the second psychic energy there and just get myself another ink. Could get the Mew, but I didn't have a flow stone. If I had a flow stone, there would be an argument for getting Mew and like uh, then attaching to it. But yeah, I can't really put this beast energy on much of anything. I could put it on Inke, but I think I'm just going to pass just in case my opponent ends me or anything like that. And I get to hang on to the beast energy. I don't want to just waste it. So it looks like I, oh, I thought we had two wishy-washy in play, but it looks like that was actually a remorade on the bench. I am tired. Oh my goodness. I thought that that was a whole wishy-washy on the bench. Nope. So my opponent's getting off to a pretty flame start here. They got the Octillery going. They've got Brooklyn Hill. They're getting out all their Laprises. They don't have any, let's see, they've Aqua Patched twice. They even, they're just going to be able to manually attach here then if they've Aqua Patched, unless they discarded an Aqua Patch. I was not paying attention. So they might have just attached that energy. Yep, they did Aqua Patch it. So they've got a fully loaded Lapras ready to go. That thing is going to totally blow the doors off my Inke, and we're going to have to find a way to try and slow my opponent down because they are, you know, the wishy-washy pretty cool, just gives them a free retreater. They're going to cowardice right into the active position. That's pretty neat. And now they have this Lapras here that can just blizzard burn. So it can't attack next turn. They need to find a way to get this to the bench, either with Guzma or something like that. They're going to have to Let's see, they just did 100. Did they just GX? They did GX. They do not care. They were like, uh, yeah, I want to Blizzard Burn next turn. They did not want to be wasteful. So let's Sycamore and see what we can come up with this turn. All right, we have somehow not hit a Malamore or a Floatstone yet. This is very bad. I don't know quite how we got here. But uh, we did. This is looking like this is going to be a short one, folks. I don't really know. Um, I think I have to hypnosis here. I don't think I have any other option. And then I have to put down this Lunala Prism just in case we have to do that. And then I think we just have to go for it. We have to go for the sleep hacks. I mean, oh, yes. Okay, so they stayed asleep. That's really good. Hopefully my opponent doesn't just have like... Guzma, and then Free Retreat or something silly like that. They do have a huge hit. Oh, they got Guzma. And then it looks like they're going to take out another Inke. Now the Guzma, all oh, the wishy-washy is so good for that. It just gives them the free retreat all the time. That is just so insane. That is so bad for me. Okay, so they're just like, oh my gosh, that wishy-washy super clutch I'm seeing. I guess like... It gives them that free retreat all the time. They could just like pop it right back down. If they, you know, if something gets knocked out, they put the wishy-washy into the active. It's kind of like a constant free retreater, even though it doesn't actually have free retreat. So that's kind of neat. I do like it. It's a cute idea. And it's definitely working here. So my opponent did get the blizzard burn this time. Now they aren't going to be able to attack. I'll put up the Inke just because it has free retreat. 
And let's see here. At this point, I feel like I need to start charging things up. I mean, I need to hope that my opponent doesn't just have Guzma. But I think that I need to go in with like a more significant draw supporter here, even though like I could just Cynthia. I feel like I need to draw a little bit heavier. How many psychics do I have in the discard pile? I have three. I feel like I need to hit a super rod and I need to full moon star this turn onto some bench things. That probably is the only route that I have to win. So let's do that. Let's just Sycamore. I got to hit a psychic energy. And I got to attach it to my Lunala here. Let's do that. And yeah, so we got this. And then let's just retreat that thing into my Lunala. And then we are going to keep that N for sure. Let's get rid of the Lily here. Get myself an actual Inke. Show the play mat. Um, I think I just get myself an Inke. I don't actually need the Malamar this turn, as weirdly as that as weird as that is. Uh, I can afford to kind of just slow roll this a little bit. And then unfortunately that 180 with Moon's Eclipse GX does not actually get there right now because Lapras has 190 hit points. I need to find my one copy of Choice Band in order to knock out the Lapras. That's a little bit frustrating. And I'm going to use that um I'm going to use that full moon star and let's see, attach psychic energy. I'm going to just load up uh, probably the ultra necrozma here, but I only have like one psychic left in deck. So that's like not super great. I am really running low on stuff. So let's, uh, let's just do that. Sure. Let's full moon star and then throw those three energy. Yep. And we're going to throw them on to, the I think I don't know if I throw them onto the active that could be good because I know that um, I'm gonna throw like two onto the active because I know my opponent won't be able to knock out unless they like retreat manually I don't think they will we'll throw two here and we're gonna throw one onto the bench necrozma so that way I kind of have like two different options I can go in just with this lunala prism here that's not a bad play and Psy Storm for a huge amount of damage uh, while forcing them also to get onto an odd prize. That would be fine. And I know that like Guzma is an option for them. They can Ultra Ball thin their hand down. They'll Guzma. They could easily just get Choice Ban and knock out this Ultra Necrozma here on the bench, which is why I didn't want to just go. Oh, and they probably have it. Uh, exactly, which is why I didn't want to just go all energy in on the Ultra Necrozma because then it just gives my opponent just a super juicy attack there to just knock all my energy out of play by doing that. So we are in a compromised position here for sure. I don't want to say that like we can't win at this point because I think there is a route. It's just not a good one, folks. It's not a good one. Okay. Like, we can do this, but they have Octillery in play, too. We probably need to just be playing our own copy of Parallel City in this deck. I feel like that would kind of help things. I've heard some people saying that, so it probably is valid. Uh, and at this point, <clears throat> I do not want to give my opponent any free attacks or anything like that. So what do we got? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. All I need is, like, anything, and I can actually start to do stuff so let's just uh ultra ball these here sure and then i don't want to give my opponent the option yep let's get that uh i don't want to give my opponent the option to um what was i thinking uh to guzma gx no i do not want to give my opponent the option to guzma gx so i think i just keep that dawn wings in the deck and let's just end them to two now the end of two doesn't really do anything fortunately yes we did actually hit the uh professor's letter here which we low-key kind of needed so that is good i think i'm gonna go get oh goodness now i might actually need to go just hope that they don't have Choice Man Guzma because I feel like, oh, I can start powering up a Mew. I guess we can do that. It doesn't feel good, but I think we can. Um, so let's just do that. Yeah, let's, uh, Professor's Letter, go grab two of these. Oh, and I prized. Okay, goodness. Do I have a Super Rod in deck? No, I should have been looking a little more closely at this. 
but I guess I could go like start to charge up a Mew as well. And then let's see, do I have choice band? I do have choice band, yeah. So let's get these. And instead of throwing energy onto an Ultra Necrozma, I could start to throw the energy onto a Mew, which would be fine. I do need to attach this here. Uh, I do need to Ultra Ball, I think. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 200. Okay. Let's Ultra Ball the, oof, the Floatstone and the, um, and the, the Field Blower. Sure. That's fine. And I think we just go get the Mew and we start to, and we just accelerate an energy onto the Mew. And that way, like, my opponent can't win this turn but I am starting to charge something up. And I think we just gotta hope that my opponent's deck is like starting to run out of juice here because they already got knockout on my active. So let's just uh, Psy Storm. And uh, Lunala Prism's awesome. I mean, the more I play with this thing, the more I love it. It just is uh, it's just a consistent, you know, great attacker there. So that is really good. Now we do have the option to blow this thing up with my Mew, so long as we can hit a um, so long as we can hit one of my Ultra Necrozmas here and a Floatstone. Looks like we got the Manaphy out. They're going to be able to Abyssal. They're just going to have like all the juice they want. This deck has been crazy. I can't believe how aggressive this thing was just getting set up so fast. Uh, and I guess if you're not expecting any Golisopod or anything like that, like, and if you only need to hit 190 damage, then Lapras can be super good. Uh, and that's exactly what you need to hit in this deck. 190 is like perfect damage to be able to knock out everything that I've got here in this deck. And they've already got, oh, double Aqua Patch. This is pretty much game here. I don't think that there's anything I can do to keep them from keep them from winning. I mean, they've got backup attack right here. They've only got one prize remaining. So this is looking like a critical wash, which is awesome. I mean, shout out to my opponent for being able to pull this off. I think my only win out is to find my choice band and actually go in with the Don Wings Necrozma GX and you know go for the invincibility attack. But my opponent can just Guzma and knock something out if they have it. So I kind of have to hope that they don't, which is uh, not a great place to be in, but that's uh, that's where we're at. So let's go ahead and try to do it then. Just gonna attach there and Sycamore. And hopefully we can find our choice band and actually make this a game. It looks like we were not able to. I can ultra ball a few things away, but even then, like, we're just not. I was going to say, like, I could go get a Rangaroo, but we are not going to be able to Rangaroo for enough here. Uh, I have two bench spots, so I would have to ultra ball away. Two Malamars, bench a Giratina, one. I would still have three cards in hand, so there's no way. I just have to hope that, I guess, my opponent... I know. Even if they don't have Guzma, like, I don't think that there's any way that I can win without getting this knockout here. So that was just brutal. That's just a tough, tough go at it. I don't think there's anything I could have done. They just, like, ran me off the board so quick, and I just did not have the best start here. So just super, super tough. I think, like, Maybe a few more choice bands, things like that would have just helped me out. But they just were going ham every single turn. And, uh, you know, shout out to my opponent. That was pretty, pretty sick play from them. So cool stuff. Definitely kudos to you, my dude. And look at just how much energy they got in play. They are doing whatever. And all these max elixirs, they max elixirs, aqua patches. Look, and they're just going to stunt on me, man. Oh, they did. they don't have Guzma yet, I guess. So they're, like, trying to dig for Guzma. But they only got three cards left in deck. They may actually not win this. Oh, they got it. Okay, so that was pretty crazy. Look how much energy they got in play. Aquabox, cool stuff, man. It's cool, cool stuff. I think I'm going to roll one more game here to try and see if I can get the Malamar deck to cooperate a little bit better. Let's see what we can do. We're going to play Malamar one more time and see if we can uh, back that loss up with a win here. 
and see about that. But Toronto was awesome. I ended up in like 60 something, not 60 something, 40 something place, like 49th place, I think, uh, with a record of six and three. I started out five and one. I was doing awesome for the first like six rounds. And then the deck kind of just pooped on me. I was playing Buzzwool Garbodor. It was awesome. I mean, the deck is really good. We played the same list from uh, the same list that Natalie got second with at St. Louis, except we took out the second Lele and ended up putting in a fourth Cynthia, and we really loved it. In fact, our friend Will, who we drove to the tournament with, Will Mantho, you guys probably seen him in some of the vlogs that I do, he ended up getting uh, 10th place with the same list. So he did really well. I know it's a good list, and I was happy that the list was able to have one more really good showing before the next set comes out. So that was really cool. Shout out to Will Mantho getting an awesome finish, and he pretty much earned his world's invite with that finish as well. He's only got six points left to a world's invite, so awesome, awesome stuff. Now, this is interesting. Could Crabrawler be the new juice with this new set coming out because Diancy obviously makes Crabrawler a little bit more interesting. So I do like that. I think that's super cool. I'm not super worried about like the metal energies here because I think that they're not super useful in this matchup. So not really going to attach that anywhere. We're just going to Cynthia and hopefully we can draw into some ultra balls or anything like that. Oop, we did get an NK. That's good. Unfortunately, we did start our only copy of Tapu Lele, so he's kind of like an eyesore out there. We do not want that Lele out there at all, but uh, this is fine. I think that we need to just keep him out there this turn and hope that he does not get knocked out. Now, I'm actually not sure how much damage Crabrawler is going to be doing. I'm pretty sure it does like 90 or 80, I think it's 80, 80 natural damage, I'm going to have to say, and it does like as much damage to itself as it has damage counters on it. Now, this for Brawler is weak to Psychic, that's pretty good, I have a bunch of Psychic fighting resistant attackers in my deck, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem, you would think, I mean, you would think, I, I really have no idea, so let's see what we could do here, okay, they didn't have too much going on there. It looks like we should be cool. Now, unfortunately, somehow we ended up with, uh, let's see, where our metals, our super rod, and we're going to have to stick more at all because I don't actually want it here. Yeah, I could have put the floatstone on my Dawn Wings, but I kind of like it on the Lele just in case I want to put Choice Band on the Dawn Wings. I, you never really know. Okay, and then let's just, uh, let's stick more here. Okay, let's get that going. And uh, yeah, looks like we're off to nowhere, uh, except for a manual attachment there and probably a big fat pass from me, guy. So, yep, these are not the explosive turns from Malamar that I have been hoping for. So these games have been definitely a little bit more grindy. Sometimes the opening hands really work out for you. You get multiple energy in the discard pile, all that. And uh, yeah, looks like my opponent doesn't have too much going on either. So let's just play another heavy-handed hand here. We're just going to do things like really heavy-handed. We're just Sycamore. I, enough with the shuffle draw. I don't care. I don't feel like I need that Dawn Wings. I feel like I just need to start attacking. And oh my goodness, this is like... Oh my gosh, I can't believe how ridiculous this is. Okay, so like we are really not getting anything here in the terms of energy, but I can actually, I think I can pare this hand down. Let's get rid of that Sycamore. I'm probably not burning any more resources like super crazy. What's my energy? I got a letter. I've got six. Okay, I mean, I get. I guess. It's just uh, energy is tough to come by right now. This is why we play the two letters. Sometimes, uh, let's see, if I... Ult ball two things away i get to instruct for one i mean yeah this is the world we're living in uh, i guess uh, let's just fail that and then we're gonna instruct for one hope it's an uh, we ha it has to be a psychic energy it was not okay so that's uh that's that yep we are going to pass again and uh let's see let's see off to uh it's your turn my guy <laughs> that's that's it so, righty then, Malamar, I thought that, uh, I was just talking about how I thought that Malamar was, like, 
the deck. Like, I think it's the deck for next format. But, like, you know, it's hands like these, back-to-back games that just get you thinking, like, oh, my gosh, what is my opponent's deck doing? Uh, looks like uh, we could both use an N, my guy. Let's just let's just N. Let's just give us both a nice, wholesome N, and maybe we can actually start to play our decks. It looks like neither of our decks are doing each other any favors, so let's just do that. Do each other a nice big favor. Okay, and then I'm thinking that I'm just going to dark flash this thing. I think I do want to eventually, like I'd rather have some non-EX, non-GX Pokemon here in the active position, but uh, uh, we're just at least going to start with this, and then we'll go from there. Now, I'm pretty sure that even my Malamars can knock these things out because, uh, you know, they're uh, I have 60 damage. How much hit points does Kro No, it has 140. It does do 80 damage, though. So if it has a strong energy attached, then that means it does 100. With Diancy, that's 120. With Choice Band, that's 150. It's a lot of damage, but it's not enough to knock out like most things in format. So uh, I don't know, you know, how successful Corbomino is going to be in this upcoming format, especially since I think that just like psychic decks are just so good right now. Uh, decks like Dawn Wings that could just easily chew through these decks. So I think I'm just going to I'm just going to chill in sand. I don't really care to Guzma anything. Like I'm probably fine. I could Guzma up that Octillery and just knock that out, which would be probably pretty annoying for my opponent if I had to guess. Could also knock out this Diancy, which I'd have to imagine would also be pretty annoying for my opponent. So maybe we'll do that. Um, I have Guzma, sure, let's do it. Let's uh, Guzma up the, let's just get the Diancy out of here. That way you're like really not doing hardly any damage, kind of like that. And uh, then we're just going to retreat in, uh, let's make sure, Let's see. Let's. Uh, how much energy do I actually have down? None. I could get another psychic energy into the discard pile. Draw some cards. Sure. Let's get rid of this and just fail it. And then I could mysterious treasure away that ultra ball. That's fine. I don't actually want to get rid of the lunalas or anything. Done. I just want to instruct for one more card. See what we can do here. And uh, yeah, we got a float stone. That's pretty cool. I guess I'll. Psychic recharge the one energy onto my other guy here. And uh, yeah, let's just go and knock this thing out. Retreat and yeah, 120. Dark Flash, get that Diancy Prism out of here. Off to the Shadow Realm that is the Lost Zone. And then yeah, we're just going to kind of just plug away with this thing. Now, yeah, annoyingly, I guess the Pseudo Wudo should be able to do you know, watch and learn, and will knock me out. But then I'm just going to keep trading, and eventually the trades are going to work out in my favor because, um, you know, I think that their damage output is eventually just going to be a little bit too too weak uh, to be able to keep up. I don't know that they have anything that will really just produce, like, a solid one-hit knockout uh, on any of my guys, con especially considering the fat resistance that I got. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I have Mew in the deck, Mew would be like an awesome card to go get right now. Hey, there's a professor's letter. That's really good. Let's go get a couple psychic energies. Also check and see if my Mew's in there. It's not. So that's fine. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to Ultra Ball and go get ourselves that other Inke. We need to get that other Inke out like right now so that we can charge up bigger attacks later on in the game with like that Lunala Prism. That's really going to be like the big difference maker here. So I'm also going to just hold on to this Float Stone. I think ideally I want to get that Float Stone probably onto the Dawn Wings. It appears like my opponent's deck is just full of non-EX, non-GX attackers. So the choice band is never really going to be a big difference maker here. But I think that, yeah, and I don't really want to attach this energy anywhere. So I'm just going to sit on this hand and kind of just uh, kind of just wait it out because there's really no reason. Uh, I'll play it. Actually, I do. there is a reason. What I want to do is I want to draw more cards with the Rangaroo. So I want to have that. Let's just in instruct again because you never know after i take a prize like guzma that could be valuable right you never really know because after you take a prize here I, I don't know if i'll be able to pare my hand down so i'm gonna see more of my deck this way and like you saw i just topped it i got the malamar off my prizes so by paring the hand down putting the float stone down there 
I make it so that I draw an extra card with Instruct, and then I see the next card next turn. So I wouldn't have actually been able to see two cards deep because I would have been top decking the Guzma this turn instead of whatever card I will top deck next turn. So I'm like one draw ahead, which is like pretty clutch in a situation like this where I'm kind of just grinding through. I don't really have a draw supporter in my hand. So you want to do little things like that as you as you can. But uh, as you can see, I didn't really um, want to put that psychic energy anywhere. Like I could have committed the psychic energy somewhere just to do a little bit extra, uh, just to draw a little bit extra. But I don't think I needed to. Like I know I'm going to get a few turns out of this Dawn Wings. I know he's not going down right now. And I don't really want to play the psychic energy anywhere here. Oh, we got a Buzzwool in play. Pfft, fantastic. Okay. Let's get that Buzzwool out here for sure. And we're going to take care of that thing. And then, yep, we're just going to Invasion immediately. Okay. So that, I guess if my opponent's playing like Beast Ring, that could be a little sketchy because they could have just like Beast Ringed to that Buzzwool. It's probably why they put it down because they were digging for Beast Ring and they wanted to get that thing charged up super quick. So... We're just going to Dark Flash, this Buzzwool as well. Get it out of here. Dawn Wings, Necrozma GX, the Buzzwool Slayer itself. Awesome. We got a letter and a Professor Sycamore. That is super good. And now we've got our board just set up exactly how we want it. This is pretty much ideal here. And without that Diancy Prism, you know, Kerbominable is just not doing nearly enough damage to the Dawn Wings, really to make a dent. I mean, 80 damage a turn. Uh, turn into 60 damage a turn with that nasty resistance is not going to amount to much of anything. Getting into one, a okay, especially since we do have a Malamar here. My opponent would have to knock out the Dawn Wings, and they can't. So that is just game. Thank you all so much for watching the videos. Again, happy Mother's Day. I know it was Mother's Day right now for me, uh, but it's Monday now by the time you guys are watching that. So uh, shout out to all the mothers out there. Hope you all had an amazing weekend. And shout out to everybody I met in Toronto. You guys are fantastic and really, really made my weekend. It was an awesome time just meeting a whole bunch of different people and doing all that. It was really, really a great time. And again, if anybody's interested, in that six Sabrina playmat. Go check that out in the Etsy store in the description below. I can't even explain how excited I am about these. Uh, they are, it says like one to two weeks processing on them right now. That's just because uh, I placed the order for them today. So they're going to be at my place this week and they will be shipped out by Friday. So that is, uh, you know, that's kind of the timeline on those. But if you want to, you can place your order now and that'll guarantee that you'll be one of the first ones to get it. So thanks again. You guys are great. Hope you all have a fantastic week. Peace. And I forgot the deck list. So here it is. Go ahead, check that thing out. There's the deck list. Oh, yeah, not much has changed. But uh, that's it.